It is one of New York's defining landmarks. Central Park provides city dwellers with their need for green. It's where you can see free shows, free concerts, even free Shakespeare. Now, its illustrious beauty is undeniable, but its construction was no easy feat. It took 16 years to build during the mid-19th century. First, a few facts. The square footage of Central Park is about 6% of all of the land on the island of Manhattan. It's amazing to think that less than 200 years ago, this amazing urban oasis was once, aside from a few small villages, considered undesirable land. It was full of swamps, bluffs, and rocky outcroppings. But in 1853, the state government authorized the city of New York to acquire more than 700 acres of land, smack dab in the middle of Manhattan. The park was built at a time of massive immigration. And it's perfect because tons of particularly Irish immigrants are coming to America looking for work. And this is one of the biggest public works projects in 19th century America. You've got thousands of workers, sometimes upwards of 25 or 30,000 people at a time, changing the terrain, planting, removing the soil, dumping it on the shoreline. It was a huge effort that took years to get this done. And in fact, it really isn't until the 20th century they're able to really see the vision because it takes that long for the trees to mature. So early pictures of the park, the trees are little, there's lots of open space, it's not terribly elegant, it looks kind of barren. Now is we get to see the vision and a true proper landscape architect doesn't think about what you're doing for next summer, thinks about the next generation and Olmsted and Vox did it better than any. But who were Olmsted and Vox? Well, Frederick Law Olmsted was a landscape architect. He was the designer of the terrain, from grass to the trees to the plants and bodies of water. Calbert Vox was an architect and designed the elegant bridges and structures. As a team, they designed many of America's most iconic parks, including Brooklyn's own Prospect Park. But how exactly did they land the gig to design Central Park? First thing that is done in the early 1850s is they put out a bid for offers. And over 30 companies, 30 individuals, get together and make proposals. Frederick Hall Olmsted and Calvert Box teamed up and created the winning proposal. And they were given a huge sum of money, about $2,000 for winning. Every proposal had to have certain key features. A military parade ground, which Olmsted and Vox said is the Great Lawn. A fire watchtower. They did the Belvedere Castle instead of just a simple metal tower. You had to also include a skating rink, which for them was the lake. What is most interesting is there had to be a series of transverses from east to west. They designed them below street level so that when you were standing in the park, you wouldn't see the horses and wagons or smell them as they traveled east to west. And now even today, with buses, trucks, and cars, you almost know they're not there until you're right on top of them. The southern end of the park is the formal European style. And after the ramble, the big Manhattan schist crazy walkway up mid-park, it becomes like the Adirondacks or the Catskills. This is a reflection of the state of New York. The South, well, it's Manhattan. Formal, proper, elegant. Up in the northern part, 86th Street roughly to 110th Street, it's the rest of New York State. Rustic, naturalistic, mountainous, and gorgeous. Now, the north end of the park is a perfect place to picnic. Olmsted and Vox named this man-made body of water the Meer, Dutch for lake, as a nod to the 17th century European settlers who first inhabited the village of Harlem. Mm -hmm. 